Signal integrity is considered to be the measure of quality of the electrical signal. This has been always there in the field of VLSI and even the PCB design, but it has become more prevalent in the advanced designs and as the transistor sizes scale down and we started producing smaller and smaller geometrical designs, the signal integrity has become very important. So in this video, we are going to discuss what is signal integrity and what are the what are glitch and crosstalk and how these are uh, analyzed in the design of VLSI chips and what are the ways to tackle these issues. So what is signal integrity? Signal integrity is the ability of an electrical signal to carry information reliably and resist the effect of high frequency electromagnetic interference from nearby signals. That sounds too long, but this is a very broad and generic definition of what signal integrity is because the problems of signal integrity are a lot, right? Because signal integrity issues can be such as skin effect, proximity effect, hysteresis losses, transients, voltage drops, eddy current losses, harmonic distortions, reduction in permeability of the material, etc. There are lots of problems that can come and uh, spoil our chip. But two types of sources of signal integrity are internal sources and the external sources. If we consider a chip, there can be internal signals that are interfering the signal of, ref uh, of interest or there can be an external signal after the chip is manufactured, right? There can be an external signal that um, interfer interferes with the signal of interest. So we are not gonna discuss about the external sources. We are going to discuss only about the internal sources. That too, we will concentrate morely on crosstalk issues, not on other effects that I just mentioned. So in deep submicron technologies, Crosstalk plays an important role in signal integrity design and verification based on logic simulation cannot handle the effects of crosstalk noise and on-chip variations. So in order to deal with that, we have something called a static timing analysis. Why noise and signal integrity analysis? Why do, we, why do we have to do it? Number one, increased number of metal layers. As we are scaling down the transistors and more and more transistors are being routed, uh, are being included in the same area. What happens is the an amount of interconnections needed are becoming more and more. And this in turn needs to increase the number of metal layers. In order to do that, we are increasing the metal layers in the older technology nodes. We used to have uh, four to six metal layers, but in newer designs, we have 10 metal layers, 12, and uh, even up to 18 metal layers uh, are being used in uh, VLSI chips. So increase of metal layers are again increasing the capacitance cross capacitance that's one reason and higher routing density due to finer geometries that's absolutely true because as the transistor sizes are scaled down for a given area there will be more transistors accumulated so interconnections between them is becoming the space is becoming very very small and because of that space less space the coupling capacitance is becoming more large number of interacting devices and interconnects which is uh, more or less the same as i just mentioned the second one so it's since there are a large number of interconnects if one net may not be a problem to the next net if the combination of multiple nets may be a problem to that net of reference so next is the higher frequency design so as we are going to advanced designs so the requirement of the, uh, the specification requirement says we need higher frequency. So as the frequency increases, we know we will have a lot of noise, right? So that is also one problem and low power supply. As the power supply, as the transistors are scaled down, as I said, the power supply is going down again. And because of that, the noise immunity of the cell is also very low. We are going to discuss only about the crosstalk glitch, which is one type of 
problem of signal integrity here so what is crosstalk and glitch usually glitch is a consequence of crosstalk so we have to understand what is crosstalk so crosstalk is the undesired electrical interaction between two or more physically adjacent nets due to capacitive cross coupling so if you want to visualize that consider these three nets and the first net is not physically connected to the second net but there is a dielectric between those two nets and what is two metal separated by a dielectric it's a capacitor so it's a parasitic capacitor which is over there so we are calling them cc1 cc2 cc3 cc4 and cc5 but they are not physical capacitors so if you want to visualize how crosstalk propagates this is how it looks like so the nand output which raises from 0 to 1 is transferred to the second net which is below so the one which is switching very fast and whose signal gets transferred to the other other net that net is called as aggressor net the one which is affected by the noise is called as victim net the one who creates problem is called as an aggressor and one who becomes a problem is actually a victim so remember that and there are different types of glitches so if you see this is the victim net and this is the aggressor net and if aggressor net is one and victim net is also one so just imagine them they are in high levels high logic levels or one you can call one and zero whatever so if this is also at one and this is also at one it is called as overshoot then the aggressor will induce a noise into this thing and it goes beyond vdd or v vcc whatever you call it and when this is called overshoot glitch and when the aggressor is going low and victim is is still high then the victim will go below vdd or vss by some amount and that is called as fall glitch and when the victim is low and aggressor is high the victim will rise from ground to some level from the ground which is called as rise glitch and when aggressor is low and the victim is low the victim goes below vss and it's called as undershoot so these are the types of glitches which are available so effect of glitch on timing glitch will create problems in timing definitely so if you consider the net b it's a net of low frequency or medium frequency whatever you call it and there is a net a which is of high frequency the transition time if you can see from here is a little higher than what transition time this is and there is a net c again whose transition time is again faster as compared to this net but it is switching before this net and it is switching from high to low and there is a the, this net is switching from low to high and this b net is switching from high to low there's a chance if there is a cross coupling or cross talk that this a and b can act like aggressor to this net b if a acts like an aggressor then you see the glitch will make this net b to switch a little slower because this net induces a zero to one transition again that one comes over here and it may slowly reach zero and this de creates an extra delay which is called as delta delay and this delta delay will be calculated by the engines of timing uh, engines and it will be modeled and used in static timing analysis and it will be added or subtracted depending on the value 
But at the same time, net C can also act as an ag aggressor to net B, which causes it to switch faster, which means it's, it's going from 1 to 0 very fast, and that 0 can go over here, and it may push this net B to switch faster than what exactly needed. So net, uh, this results into two types of problems because uh, a slower transition results into setup violations, a uh, faster violation results into hold violations. What type of glitch can be transferred, will be transferred to the output of any cell? So it's coming below VDD, but if the magnitude of this glitch is still lesser then i mean if 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 the magnitude of this glitch is lesser than uh, vih minimum then it's fine and these this is safe which means if it goes below this level if the out, uh, if the input of this cell goes below this vih minimum then it will not be treated as one or high log, uh, logic high by this input that's what vih minimum right so then it will it will be a problem because at the output we will not have uh, what we needed function uh, functionality wise the output will not be correct similarly this is actually called rise glitch and if the magnitude is lesser than this vil max then it's fine and this this is safe but if it's greater than this value then the cell will not be able to recognize this as a logic low and output will not be deterministic it may go to some metastable state or something like that so this this is called as dc margin because it considers only the magnitude of the signal which is magnitude of the glitch there is also something called as ac margin which considers the width of the signal and ac margins are depending on many other things one is the width of this uh, glitch and one more thing is the capacitance the output capacitance or output load as the capacitance increases the glitch will not be seen at the output and capacit if the capacitance is lesser and some amount of glitch will be transferred to the output so we have two types of margins right one is the dc margin which does not vary with the width so if you take this as glitch width the x reference is glitch width so dc margin does not vary with glitch width which is constant but ac margin still till this point is fine as the glitch width increases ac margin also i mean there will be uh, it, it results into potentially hazardous glitch so how do we avoid the crosstalk issues? There are a few techniques that I have mentioned here. So don't route, don't ever route a medium switching frequency net, any signal net nearby a high frequency net. Usually clock will be very highly uh, high frequency net. Second is increase the spacing between the nets which have violations. So if we have timing violations because of noise, then we can move the victim nets away from the highly switching nets. The third is shielding the high frequency nets, which are usually clock nets. So if we shield using VSS net, so if we place VSS nearby clock nets, then there is a chance that all the noise will go to, uh, all the noise will be grounded. And there is a last method, which is inserting buffers in the victim path. This can also significantly help to boost the transition time i have a video on that you can watch in my channel so inserting buffers will definitely boost the uh, transition time which will help to resolve the timing problems that are coming from crosstalk so this is a simpler explanation about what is crosstalk what are signal integ integrity issues and how it is de uh, dealt in the static timing analysis of the VLSI design phase and how what are the best known methods to avoid the crosstalk issues so I'll see you in the next video
Thanks a lot for watching and bye-bye.